one is, uh, this is our two gallon uh, variety of uh, nanos. And this one, um, when looking at it up there amongst the uh, other barberries, this one has a, a, a better leaf, a bigger leaf, more uh, glossy leaf. So, so that's what we put on there is a large glossy leaf. But um, the growth on it is pretty uniform as far as uh, the growth pattern, the growth shape of it. Uh, just one thing that you guys want to remember though is when you're uh, selling it, getting it out of people's uh, lots and stuff, it's a, it's a spray program that we have in place here. Um, um, usually it's usually about 10 days. We try to hit it with some type of uh, copper or dacanel or uh, agromycin we're throwing into the mix right now uh, just to kind of keep that bacterial leaf spot off of there. Um, but with uh, the purple ones, as I mentioned before, and it kind of actually hides, hides it. If you, if you do happen to get it, the purple ones do hide it a little bit better than the yellow variety. Um, and then uh, trim it back. Um, you can just trim it off and then clean up the, the cuttings that you have in your landscape. Just, uh, that's, that's another way of trying to get rid of it as well. That's uh, bacteria. Uh, but there's uh, 2,500 of these available right now. They've got great color out there in this, uh, up there, especially because the uh, yellow that they have. So. Uh, next up, we got uh, uh, boxwood uh, winter gem. And this is a, a seven gallon that we have. Uh, on 21 inches, uh, pretty heavy plant. You can see how, how full they are. Um, some of the, the notes that we have on this is it's actually a really, really tough, tough boxwood. It's the best boxwood to put in tough, tough spots, tough situations. Um, so that's why it's used so much with that large glossy leaf that it has. Um, it does have uh, better boxwood blight resistance, though, if you're talking to some customers than uh, some of the other. Uh, varieties out there on the market, but uh, this one's really, really good for that, for controlling that. And um, on the corn note on this one, when uh, you don't want to water, you can you have a tendency to overwater this in the springtime, the early, early springtime. And just trying to wake it up out of out of winter slumber there, it's, um, you, you can overwater pretty easily. And you don't really need a lot of water until they start pushing out the growth, which is uh, late spring. But um, and then. Even into the summertime, you want to cut back on that water too. So that way, you're trying to uh, inhibit that disease or any disease that you put in there. Um, then there's uh, 2,500 of these out availability right now. So they're really cool. Go get them. So uh, next up, we got uh, Canvas Zipper Smops in a two gallon, uh, 10 inches, and these are. Uh, I think so, Danny. Uh, and Cheryl believes these are still on Danny's uh, special list. And these got great color. Um, I know we're uh, past the, the winter, but I still put that note on here. And it does need uh, winter water. If, you're, if you have uh, customers that do overwinter them, um, definitely uh, they can dry out very easily without even knowing it. Even even right now, you might, you might uh, they might have great color, they might look good, but you can dry out really, really quick. Um, another note on Growing these is you want to avoid that summer trimming. Um, and we're getting pretty much past that date. We're not, uh, we're not trimming back anymore um, of these mops right now as it is. So but they got great color. They got minimal disease issues. So that's why uh, some of the other aspects with it. And there's uh, 2,500 of these out of availability. Uh, next up, we got a, a, a lot of grass. Uh, we're not going to go into too much detail with them, but just to show you where they're at in their stages, the 19 centimeters. Uh, we got strictus here. Uh, if you want to scroll through these, there's 300 of those available. Uh, scrolling down, there's uh, Hamlin um, in 19 centimeters. There's 15 of those. Uh, and then we even got some 3 gallons, 800 of those in availability. Those look great um, with those, so 19 to 3s. And then uh, scrolling down, we got. Um, Rigoletto. Rigoletto. I was <coughs> pronouncing that one so much, I was practicing so hard last night. I tried to pronounce that one. Those <laughs> 19 centimeters out. Uh, there's 300 of those on availability. And uh, those ones are kind of interesting. They got like a little bit wider wider blade than, uh, than your morning light. But uh, they kind of give you that same look, but just not that, that thin of a lean. So that's a lot different one. Um, going down, we got uh, Blackhawk. Uh, 
uh, I forgot to move with that one. That one's a, a really nice, nice one there. But it's a little later popping up in the springtime, but that color on it, it's just fabulous with that little purple. You know, we planted these up in the landscape around the, up in the front entrance, and they, they're, they're looking really good up there. Uh, scrolling down, we got uh, Daggio there in, in 19 centimeters, 250 lows in availability. Those are all short ones. Um, going down, we got uh, Morning Light. Uh, just to show you where they're at, the 19 centimeters. Looking great, coming along really good. And I. There's Shining Sky. Now those ones don't, now these do look at the purple in there, they just haven't developed that yet. You see a little tint there and there, but they'll develop that a little bit later on. And uh, hey, Summer. They're flushing real hard. But they're flushing really, really hard. They look really good. Um, and then we got uh, Carl Forrester. Can I check that one? Uh, 1,200 loads on availability. And those are looking, uh, now that's a really tough one that you can. We don't have to. We don't. We choose not to put that under heat because that one will grow all winter long just with that little bit of heat on it. So we try to keep that as cool as possible when we're trying to grow that one. And I think that's about it for the grass. And some of those two gallons to three gallons we do not have three right now. And uh, yeah, okay, so if you didn't hear that, uh, three gallons are all sold out of the Carl Forester, so we got to try to push those two two gallons. Uh, we have 1,200 lows on availability, but those are flushing really good. Coming on, the rust is really, really even with all the rain that we've had, um, we've been spraying all these grasses uh, with, uh, with a lot of different things besides for the, for the rust. And um, we did change our watering habits here. Um, instead of doing a, a late afternoon spray, we're doing a uh, mid afternoon spray, and um, and that seems to help out quite a bit with the rust development. Uh, for our end, even though it doesn't matter because we were getting a, a month of rain, it didn't really matter. <laughs> but uh, but now that it's drying up, uh, we're getting we're getting really good growth on this stuff, and stuff's pushing along really nice. So hydrangea, the lime lights, just to show you where they're at. Uh, hey Matt. Yes. Before we move on from grasses, it seems like at a lot of my customers, the stuff we shipped out early okay. is really off color, and it's pretty much across the board. I mean, yes. Um, I would definitely hit them with another fertilizer. Um, just any, anything would probably work. We're using a, uh, I want to say, a 13 by 8, I think is our fertilizer blend from uh, the wheat you know. um, Anything just to kind of help perk it up because, it, I mean, that, you just did blame it on the rain all the time, but it, I, I mean, it flushed out all the, all the nutrients in that pot. It really did, and we had to actually go back and re-fertilize a lot of our grass. We had to. A lot of the okay. years actually is that uh, we don't normally re-fertilize. We we did have to re-fertilize so That was kind of a problem. Okay, that's, that's an good. explanation. That's helpful. Yeah. Um, any other questions on the grass or? Okay. Uh, hydrangea limelight. Um, just to show you where they're at. Um, coming along. Um, this Jeff trimmed his over there at Avon, so we're switching over to this for our priorities. Uh, this is what the three gallons are. There's 2,500 of those available out here on the unavailability. Um, just to show you the size, I don't, I don't recall when we were looking at Jeff to see what his sizes were, but uh, this is what we're going to be getting into now. So, just to show you that I don't want to get the next of that in the past, but um, moving on to uh, hydrangea queen Alice. Um, this one's a, a really good hydrangea. Uh, it's also called the uh, oak leaf hydrangea, but the, uh, the flowers are just coming on right now and they'll bloom uh, like this until through August. Uh, it does like a little bit more acidic soil, um, but a, a well drained soil as well. It is really easy to overwater these in the springtime. Um, stuff leaking out, uh, so you definitely want to keep that in mind when you're putting that in a landscape or you're selling it to a customer and, and they have to overwinter these or or whatnot. They uh, if they if in the springtime comes around, there's there's no leaves that there's nothing really going on in the plant. You definitely don't want to keep watering it every day. That's, uh, you'll definitely develop a lot of symptoms and problems that way. Um, a good note on this though, these 
hydrangeas are the, are the size of the leaves. And that, they are the size of the I mean, when they when they're coming the the through August, you can put your hand on some of these leaves, and they're they are the size of my hand. Yeah, they're so huge. Um, because of our fertilizer program that we had, we we were able to develop that. You know, we do keep them uh, semi shaded throughout the throughout the summertime with that high tunnel, um, and that's just to kind of help us uh, grow better crop for you guys because that keeps a lot of the stress off of it. Um, in the landscape, I have seen them in the full sun. Um, you just won't see the development like you will under the par uh, partial shade. So they can take full sun. Anybody ask that? But and there's 250 of these on availability, 37 gallons. Um, going on to the rhododendron PJ uh, PJM leaves. There's uh, 500 of these on availability. Um, same thing with these with the high tunnel. We try to keep that foliage dry um, with this because we just, we want to try to develop as little problems as possibly can. Um, just like those oak leaves, these are on the copper system, and just to kind of help with the phytophthora that uh, rhododendrons are so naturally known for. Um, so you definitely want to keep that in mind. You want to put these in a well-drained area to kind of help limit that. Um, uh, I, we won't see too many bloom right now, right? Because it'll bloom early spring. But the plants look great. They're 24 inches. Uh, the fall color is, is, is wonderful. I mean, due to the different colors of purples and the reds that develop in the leaves for the fall color. Uh, PGMs are definitely a, a staple for the landscape because of those those colors that uh, landscapers love. Um, it's it's an attractive plant most of the fall. Uh, PGMs were we select them, uh, if you don't remember from being told in the past the day that they, uh, they're selected and we, we grow them here because of the, they develop that full bottom to it. Uh, but with the other varieties of PGMs, like straight PGMs or even the that we grow, uh, it's a little harder to get that fuller bottom. Uh, just, you have to trim those plants more uh, to develop it. You can develop it, but it just takes a little bit longer. Uh, this one's a really natural. Um, instinct is to, to develop a whole plant. So it's a heavy bloomer too. So with all that, um, so don't think that this one does perform really, really well. Um, there's 500 loads of availability. Moving on to uh, syringa boomerang or purple. Uh, this one is a really good lilac. It's really adaptable for the soil. Um, and once again, we keep this under high tunnel just because of those early spring greenings that you can you can develop on uh, some of this stuff. You can develop pseudomonas and stuff like that. We're trying to keep this stuff as clean as possible. Um, you don't need to have it under <coughs> in the landscape at all, but um, but we just do that to give the best plant possible. Um, in the springtime, you definitely don't want to overwater it. It's, you don't want to overwater it. It's really easy to just overwater some of these along with the hopefully five ranges, you know, you can you go and even the, some of that other stuff you can just overwater it so easily, but um, you definitely want to just kind of back off until it starts pushing and starts growing a little bit. Um, there's some, the buds are starting to develop on these, they're starting to push out, and you can see them right on the top of that, um, on that of those little plank, those are all flower buds, they're not weeds growing in there, they're all flowers, and uh, they're coming along really good. Uh, the boomerangs do rebloom. Uh, that's what they're known for. Um, a lot of a lot of the Michigan varieties will rebloom, but you have to turn them back. You have to do a little bit of things. Uh, boomerangs just kind of sort of selected because they'll they'll rebloom naturally on their own without without much without much uh, trimming back. So they're uh, really great plant. Um, and there's 250 of those available in that seven gallon container. Uh, moving on to Thuja, the uh, fire chief. These are the lightest. Um, they're coming along pretty good. We haven't had them on in a while. So we got them on here now, and they're they're coming along pretty good. They were really slow coming out in the spring. It was so cold, uh, not much sun available out there. And they're just, uh, just slowly developing out there. Usually they take right off in the springtime. Spring was a little different, but... Uh, but during that time, we, we were playing a little game of uh, 
turning the water off and those because it's really easy to open water these things when they're not growing. So and these plants, but once the once they're growing, they do grow fast. They'll grow fast in the summer. Um, these were actually a direct stick into the three gallon. It's one of our processes to try to eliminate some of the steps. Uh, we go from a, a little little four little size and we stick a rate of big three gallon size and they'll we'll fill that in pretty quick, but just took a little longer because of the spring. But um, just uh, as a note there, you definitely want to just watch the water um, early spring, but um, but they got great color with little problems. Um, as far as disease or insects, um, <clears throat> that kind of uh, thing is really limited on these plants, and there's 1,700 of those on availability. Um, next up, we just give you an update on our flower bud developments going out here. We got uh, the stellas. They're uh, blooming really, really nice. There's 3,000 of those availability on the, the 19 centimeters per one gallon. Uh, scrolling down, I think there's, what was that? Scrolling up. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's already at the bottom. <laughs> uh, scrolling up would be uh, oh, there are Bobo's hydrangeas. There's 1,100 of those on availability. Um, those are coming along pretty nice. They're not pure white yet, but they're just coming out. That's the color they look like when they're coming out. And then going all the way up to uh, quick fire, a little quick fire. This is their stage that they're at. You can kind of see the, the white developing in there. I'm going to get some of those leaves. So there's 600 of those on availability in that two gallon. And I think we have another plant there. I can't really, I need to touch my computer. <laughs> Just <laughs> you to do some of the symbols around to see what's next. Um, we got uh, green giant arborvitae. Just to show you the different sizes we have um, available, we don't have um, five gallons on availability. So just to show you that we have seven gallons, we have the 25 gallons, and we have the, the 15 gallons. If you look, look through the picture, you can kind of see the different different sizes of the ruler and where they're all at. Uh, right now, the 15s and the sevens are um, there's a little difference in height. Not, not as much as you would expect to be the difference on the gallon size. However, the girth on them is a lot better. So if you're getting, uh, if you get uh, people that want are gonna have these on their lot for a long time, you definitely want to leave them from the 15 gallon just because they'll hold up better. Uh, if you got the quick turn landscapers, the, the seven gallons will be fine for that kind of stuff. Just pushing that. And if you got the guys that just that got the moving bucks out there. Just give them those 25 and we love those. They're so big and they're nice. So. Uh, another one up is uh, Calicarpa Purple Pearls. Uh, we're growing a number of different Calicarpas. Common name is Beautyberry. That is in regards to uh, the berries that you see in the picture. Most of them will throw these purple berries in the fall. This is after they flower. Depending upon where you read, they will start flowering from now until the fall. One of the issues we have with anything that throws berries on the fall is we have to watch when we trim them, and you also have to have a little age to the plant. Uh, this would also pertain to like reticulata, uh, winterberry, ilex, and also the hypericum that we do. Uh, this plant, the other advantage it has to it, which you really don't see on this picture, but the new foliage is a darker purple. It does go back to green as it goes throughout the season. It's a little bit shorter and more compact than some of the calicarpas. It's only four to five feet high and wide. It does uh, stay relatively full. It doesn't stretch quite as bad. Uh, main claim to fame this plant, though, is that purple berry in the fall. Jerevello butterfly, I think we've talked about this in the past. Uh, these are just starting to bloom. Uh, lower left-hand picture is the current crop. Uh, it's got flowers on it, just like you see that flower picture actually came off the internet. This is a plant that we've grown for a number of years. It's uh, very drought tolerant. It does need uh, moist, well-drained soil conditions. It tolerates a lot. It's a zone four, so it's really hardy. Uh, typically three to four feet high and wide. Uh, it does start flowering now, and it will probably be in flower for a couple weeks. Uh, this plant, like Abelia, it has that trumpet-shaped flower that's really good for not only bees but for hummingbirds so 
if someone ever asks you if a plant will attract hummingbirds, if you have a trumpet-shaped flower, uh, you're pretty safe at saying yes. Put the helenium in. Uh, common name on this one is sneezeweed. I'm not sure what drives that, but uh, never noticed anything with it that would make you sneeze. But uh, these are really compact plants. Uh, the actual uh, autumn alley, which is uh, one that you find in the wild, will get three to four feet. But these are only 15 to 18 inches high. Uh, you can see the picture on the lower left. They're nice, full, compact. They're relatively easy to get to that so they're almost all um, cookie cutter in appearance. They do start flowering, depending upon what you read, they'll say late fall, late summer to fall. We do have some, as you can see, the bigger one is a carryover from last year. It's just started to flower. Once these flower, they're pretty much blooming machines from now to the end of fall. You can see in the right-hand picture the number of flower buds on the ones in the planting. Uh, the other thing that's kind of neat about this plant is it is a zone three, so it is extremely hardy. Uh, there again, like with a lot of perennials, you need to keep them in a well-drained site. They do not tolerate a lot of wetness throughout the winter months when they're dormant. But this is just, uh, we've got two varieties here, uh, the Bandera and the Ranchera. Ranchera is more of the solid red that you see in the top, and then the Bandera on the bottom is a orange-yellow combination. So both of these are really identical in appearance until they flower. 